Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 RC channel. Today, one of my biggest videos ever. This is going to be the entire setup that I'm running with my DR10. Now, the, I have the associated DR10 kit that I've put together with some key specific parts that many of you probably have or want. My whole theory behind this has been to keep it as basic as cost effective as possible so that way if you have a dr10 rtr you're lucky enough to get one because they just keep selling out time and time again then you will be able to pretty much drop in this stuff and in all hopes be where i'm at so we're going to go over my tune and everything all in one shot Timestamps are going to be below in the description if you want to fast forward to different stuff I'll take the time to do that for you guys while you're down there if you want to support myself in the channel I have Amazon affiliate links down there to, for certain items that I build with play with whatever You can click on one of those and any purchase that you make on Amazon I'll get a little commission in as well And there is a paypal.me link if you feel like tipping me and buying me a beer or something so anyway, enough of this, let's get to it. So I put in so much time with this car over the past three to four weeks, cold weather, warmer weather, all that kind of stuff. I feel super confident in everything that I am saying to get everybody that is a beginner to an intermediate person just on the road to success as cost effectively as possible as lease maintenance, all that kind of stuff. Just try to make the no prep stuff easy not get caught up in all this hype, all the fast on Facebook people, all that kind of stuff. I could consistently run 52 to 55 miles per hour with my setup, 2.65 to about 2.8. So I'm pretty happy with those results, way better than I was doing last year. And it does it like every time. And if it does not, then I have a few tools to fix that and we'll go over those here in the video. Real quick though, since I'm pretty confident in my setup right now and there's really not a whole lot more I can do until it gets warmer, I'm gonna be working on this baby here. This is my Tamiya TT02 that I bought last year before the pandemic hit. Wanted to get into racing. Racing opened back up, it started in November and we all know work was just crazy at uh, the hospital because of the surge and everything like that. So I didn't get to race a lot with it. So we're gonna modify this thing up and do some speed running with it and just have some fun because the season for carpet racing is over. So that'll be coming up on a channel and some more FPV stuff for you guys as well. Now let's get on to the DR10. So here it is without its main appearance, which is the Proline ProMod Corvette C7 body that everybody runs. It's this one right here. You can see I've actually got two of them, a red and a white one that I'm working on. And on the back of those is the wings by Tony Evans Wings. I'm gonna put a link up here in, uh, to his Facebook. I'll flash it on the video right now. So that way you guys can see Tony's got his wings in stock, 20 bucks shipped, and you usually get them in like two or three days. I've got, I like to paint mine up, uh, black, uh, chrome finish, stuff like that, and just kind of make them look a little bit more scale. Super awesome. You know, I'm not like a wing expert, but it does the job for me, and they fit the body really great, so I'm just loving it. So we'll get the, the low hanging fruit out of the way real quick. I'm running Spectrum. DX5C, no big deal there. I've got my steering cut down to 40%. You guys are gonna wanna do that so you don't make quick moves. And remember, you're just correcting the way that your car is going with drag racing. You're not trying to like steer it. So correct, correct, that type of stuff. Regular spectrum receiver inside there, no big deal. This right here, a lot of people have asked about. This is the Sky RC GNSS, runs with the app on your phone. This is what you see gives everybody your charts that look like this right here with your speed and all that kind of stuff. So everybody pretty much knows about this. This is the McAllister um, extended body mounts. Every There's a lot of different people that have these right now. You can actually buy certain things off of A-Main that will extend your rear body mounts. 
Um, I use magnets. I don't use the, uh, the actual body mounts. Don't really know if anything is uh, one better than the other. I like the magnets because I could just pop it on and off easily. Not a problem at all. Got it at that all figured out. Loving that. So that's when it comes to the body, that's pretty much it. I do have the, the stock frame, as you can see. I've got these 3D printed um, side dam adapters that you can get off of Thingiverse. I got these printed in Pet G with my uh, Prusa Mini Plus, and I keep extra ones. I broke a couple with some crashes. I keep the extra ones in the bag, two screws, pop them off, put the new one in, boom, done. Do they work? I guess I'm no expert at it, but I think they do. Uh, they're, they're, it's working fine. Uh, I don't think it's hurting me, so I'm not going to take it off. The guy that was in the finals at King of the Streets had him on, so we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. So let's talk about electronics. Now, I think electronics, and you probably do too, are the most important thing that we have. Now, I am running the Macklin DRK160 ESC, and their four and a half turn motor. Uh, personally, I think any decent four and a half turn motor around that $100 price range is all gonna be about the same. I would probably recommend most of you to go to three and a half turn if you can. And the reason why is 20 degrees on this motor on the dial is not 20 degrees. It's not on my hobby wing. Uh, a couple other people, Midwest RC, here's his channel right here. Go show him some love, subscribe to him. Gravity Racer GT as well. He's very, very active in the community. Go and show him some love too. Help those guys out and let them grow because they're trying to spread the joy of the no prep hobby as well without all the hype and all the craziness. Looking at these motors, pretty much 20 degree bell timing, which is what McLean recommends. This is on the McLean and the hobby on the hobby wing are at least half of that. So it's the hobby wing uh, with uh, with Tim uh, come out to like seven degrees. My hobby wing came out to, to nine. Uh, set at 20 uh, the McLean came out to 12 set at 20 so you're we're paying you know with quality control and them trying to get things out unless you spend the big money on like a sport tuned tested motor where all your phases are correct all your poles are correct all your magnets and all the laminations and everything inside the motor are perfect all these statistics that they try to sell you on do not mean a thing. It's like the silicone lottery with graphics cards and processors. Some of you are going to get motors that are going to work better than others at their specific timing. So if you notice, like I did, that your motor's just not making the RPMs that you think it should be, or that everybody else is kind of posting that you want to believe, then you might want to turn that up or you can buy yourself a motor analyzer from Sky RC for a hundred bucks for the basics. There's a really good one called the Motorlizer that I actually had this DRK tested on and that's where I got my results. So when it comes to my DRK four and a half turn motor, I'm running 8422 as McLean recommends. And I have the end bell timing turned up to about 28 degrees. And that gives me about 20 degrees on the motorizer. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Your mileage may vary, but again, don't get hung up and you have to have this motor or that motor. Get what you can get, get what you can afford. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. The ESC, let's face it. It's just an ESC. The thing that makes the McLean 160 so special is the five stage launch control. It's definitely not this Wi Fi link that I have. It's definitely not their application or anything else that they're doing. And anybody, Hobby Wing, Tekken, any manufacturer is literally one firmware update away from making this ESC irrelevant. I think these guys, I've said it in my videos before, I think they're definitely way in over their heads right now. They don't have the support that like a Hobby Wing has or a Tekken who just has all of this money and design and development, North American support. Well, these guys are, do have North American support but I just see a lot of creaks in their foundation. 
that's my feelings with the electronics it all works it's great but again for right now i would recommend it but in another two or three months this whole discussion could be irrelevant because every manufacturer could have three five seven ten stage launch control set out there and that really is the key to getting these cars going guys it's not suspension it's nothing else it really is how well you can control the hit and then how much you can pour on at the end and then how much your motor's working for you and batteries too but we'll get to that the other thing steering let's talk about the steering servo so a lot of people will say that you do not need to upgrade to a high-end steering servo i disagree it's the thing that basically is going to keep your car straight guys if you hit a rock if you're going up on a curb you want something that's got good build quality solid power doesn't get any better than reefs this is the 299 low profile that fits inside the dr10 here perfectly with plenty of space because this is kind of a weird measurement right here it's like 38 and a half millimeters where most of these are like 40 millimeters so you want to be careful with that if you decide not to go with the reefs uh the other thing is i ditched the actual servo saver and i went with the associated arm um, in there for the servo arm the associated one is literally the only one that will fit and work with this one that i know of just make it easy on yourself i got it on amazon i think they got them on a main if you can find one pick them up get rid of that even if you don't want to have a really nice servo in there that will definitely help your steering out no problem when it comes to batteries i'm running this one here the max amps 5000 milliamps a lot of people like shorty packs 4650 4300 whatever i don't really care about the weight because the car is heavy enough already if you want to try to compete with the best maybe you want to go with a smaller one i like to have more maz to pull from you know 5000 5500 6000 i've ran evo techs uh, those things puffed on me so i won't get those again i've heard jen's ace is okay you know whatever but i'm gonna stick with max amps just because they're warranted their prices have came down 100 bucks for the pack that i'm showing you right here it comes with a charge lead adapter so you can charge which is great you can see i'm running five millimeter bullets so it plugs right in no problem now let's just start going uh let's just work our way around the car here for the rest of the stuff i am using one of these esc trays here just to get the mclaren up a little bit higher battery positioning i think uh that helps with also just getting more air to the esc so that way we can avoid heating issues and all that kind of stuff i don't use any kind of cat pack or any of that stuff all these manufacturers recommend against it some of them won't even cover you under a warranty i keep on there what is soldered on or what comes with from the manufacturer that's the best and safest way to roll it seems to be working out fine for me you know quit watching so many of these uh you know crazy people on youtube i'm without naming names front end nothing special here at all guys all stock associated stuff that came in the kit the basic shocks all that stuff the only thing is, is i do have fuel tubing in there to limit my front end travel that's it i'm using 50 weight oil here in the front and while we're talking about it 50 weight oil um i'm sorry 1000 weight oil in the back just because i got a lot of weight back here and i just want that stiff rear end it just seems to be working out really well for me all stock again build your shocks really good i use the green slime by team associated i don't see or have any leaks or anything like that i've got all of these parts to build up like the shocks i've got the x rings i've got all that crap but i haven't done anything to it because there's just no need right now everything just works and i don't want to mess with anything and I don't want you guys to have to go and spend more money the other thing if you don't have a 3d printer you can also buy these but i'm running this extended shock mount to get the rear shocks out vertical just i guess it's working i really didn't run 
the car a lot last year in the stock position. Uh, I saw the guy from King of the Streets was running this and most people were. So I just went ahead and did that. I do have some aluminum uh, caps on top of my shocks. I forgot to talk about just uh, because these have bleeder caps back here. So I've got some for the front, haven't did them yet. Rear shocks again, no fuel tubing, nothing. All built just like out of the manual that comes with the associated kit that there is some little internal limiters in there and everything else, but I built them just the way that they told me to without using any of uh, the extra stuff and changing the fluids. So when it comes to wheels, of course, I'm using Proline Hoosiers here in the front. I do have a set of the DE Narrows, but I haven't put them on yet. Reactions, everybody has that. If you don't know about them, the Proline Reactions, they're belted tire. They don't balloon unless your glue, your, uh, glue bead pops, which did happen to me the other day. Uh, but I have since switched to the split six beadlock wheels with the carbon fiber assault RC rings. Now there's carbon fiber rings out there. There's uh, anodized rings. There's all kinds of stuff out there that will allow you to use all 12 holes in your split six bead locks. So that way you can get a good grip. I had my fastest rips on these. I know they're heavier, but in the end, it just kind of helps keep the ground, helps keep the, the car planted to the ground, launch better, I have had nothing but better luck using these right now than blowing a bead, doing a burnout. And when it comes to burnouts, guys, keep your burnouts low and slow. Don't rev that thing up all the way. Try to keep your at like 20, 30% throttle or around 15 to 20,000 RPMs max and just work that car back and forth. Get these tires barking on your pavement or asphalt and that way they'll be nice and warm and ready to go. I don't run tire warmers yet. I might down the road. Um, can't get the bands in stock right now, not a big deal. Maybe one of these days I will switch to that. Um, in the back, you can't see it, but I do have like the Drag RC or RC Concepts or whatever um, aluminum motor mount. So that way I got rid of that plastic part. And then I'm using just the Evotech wheelie bar back here. My car doesn't even use the wheelie bar guys. It's pretty much just dead weight and it's just there for show. And I'm not sure if you actually have to have one. In 13.5, I know you don't have to, you don't use one. Honestly, I don't even need it. If I didn't have to have it, I would probably take it off. It does make a nice handle and it makes it nice to have something to hold on to while you're doing burnouts and everything like that. But you know, when you look at these fancy cars that these people are driving with the springs and everything, and they say you're supposed to get the transition and you want your bar to hit just a little bit before it takes off or when it takes off to get a bigger hit, all that is gonna do is just create unpredictability. You're gonna unload and all that kind of stuff. You just don't wanna deal with it. So the key, especially if you are lucky enough to have a Macklin, is to get the thing to launch and then go. Don't worry about producing all this power right within the first half second of your run you want to be well on your way not still back there fishtailing and all that kind of crazy stuff i already told you about my gearing 8422 is what is in there i do have uh i believe 50k in the diff and I have the Robinson Racing uh, steel idler gear in there. I have the aluminum one. It wasn't made when I did it. I would probably go aluminum now because it's probably gonna be a little bit safer on those plastic gears. But again, if you're not being crazy geared and all this other stuff, you're not gonna like probably tear that transmission up. These associated transmissions are solid. When it comes to the slipper, I have, um, revolutions designs i have like one of their fancy slipper clutches and everything but you can see i'm just using the good old stock i am using the version one pads i have carbon fiber pads i've got a bunch of different pads to try but i haven't had the need to like put them on or anything these v2 pads are work, are work these v1 pads are working just fine i've got my slipper adjusted 
right to where associated says, which is even with the top of the nut. So take all the guesswork out of it. I've done it all guys for you. And this is just what's working and how it is going. Is there anything else to cover? I feel like I'm missing a lot. I clean the tires with simple green when I get home and before I go, they make everything nice and just kind of rubbery. I'm still working with the gremlin goo, trying to play out with that a little bit. You know, it is what it is. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of unpredictable. I need to play with that a little bit more. Maybe when it gets warmer between that and being able to decrease my and increase my launch percentage, I think that maybe I can break 60, I would say. Uh, there's plenty of room to go in this car with more on the motor, more on the hit, that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna run this the way it is. Just keep on practicing with it, have some fun, make sure it all works out. Battery placement, I put the battery all the way back now that I have it up here. Again, just to kind of offset and keep the weight here. People talk about weight distribution and weighing the corners and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it's important, maybe it's not. I really don't know. Again, it's all about, those are like the things that you worry about when you're in the 99th percentile, which is kind of funny to say because literally, if we all got lucky at King of the Streets for eight or nine times in a row, we would be in that 99th percentile. So don't think that you can't do this. Anybody can do this. This was a proven setup. People have been out there winning with less than this. Don't think that you have to spend all this money on this stuff. I'm just saying that this is what works for me. It's really easy and for the most part, it's very economical. Easy to service, no guessing or anything at all with crazy aftermarket mod parts and stuff. Try to keep all that very, very limited. And we do have the regular associated team kit sway bar that's on here too. Again, it must be helping. I really don't know, but we'll just say that it is and that you want to get that or have some kind of sway bar. So make sure your solder joints are really good. You know, you want to be using a good solder like Kester's. You want to be using the right kind of heat. I've got a link to this down below as well. As far as what I use, been using this on my quads and all this RC stuff for years. It's never let me down. It's easy to work with as long as you maintain your tips and everything else like that. MIP drivers to help you work on your car. Bob Smith tire glue if just to make sure that your tires are glued on properly. All that stuff, all the little bit stuff will start to add up at the end. But again, there's nothing crazy here, guys. These are axial 200 millimeter battery straps. I do have some of my quad uh, sticky stuff here. This is the Uma Grip uh, light, uh, thin, uh, sticky grip, so the battery doesn't shift around. I could run it forward, I could run it back. Uh, one strip and that holds it all into place. I've already showed you the Max Amps battery that I'm using and everything else. So where am I going from here, guys? I really don't know. We we'll have our first test and tune coming up in a couple weeks, and then we're gonna start our league racing two weeks after that. So pretty excited. I am very happy right now. I might play with pinions a little bit more and maybe increase the timing up a couple degrees at a time on the actual motor itself, and we'll see what happens. When it comes to my tune, everybody's gonna say, oh, that's a crazy tune, but my stages are 30, 50, 70, 85, and 100. And then I go from 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, and 0 0.05. And then I have a, two se a 0 0.2 second delay to allow the voltage to recover before the turbo comes on. I have 35 degrees of, of turbo coming in after th full throttle, 0 0.2 seconds later, and I play with my slope time of between 10 and about 14, depending upon where my battery's at, because I'm not one of these guys that brings my car back and does a hit and ch charges the battery and wants like the perfect data every time. Like I feel with a good setup and I have now, I can get at least three or four good hits and get some reasonable data, then top the battery off. 
one, one important thing with batteries, especially when you spend good money on them, is we're running these batteries down to like 4.0 or 4 or 3.9 volts, and that's it. Make sure that you discharge those at home and cycle them properly to keep them in the game. You don't want to be buying batteries every couple months because you're running them to 4 volts and charging them back up to 4.22. That's going to be it, guys. I don't really know what else to say. I'm losing my voice. I hope you guys have a great day and got something out of this. Please leave, let me know if you have any comments, any questions at all. I'm here for you. Don't forget to check out those other guys' channels. And again, if you want to help me out, the affiliate link's below or the paypal.me if you want to buy me a brew. So we'll see you guys later. Peace.